Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game 2 of the best of 3 between Rust and Neff in the Great Paradox Tawny. In this one we're going to be seeing Column Bell which is the 4th unique map that we have seen in the tournament so far and that is fantastic. I hope the variance continues um, throughout. But today a change of division for Rust. We're going to be seeing the first Panserna replaced by the 6th Airborne and Neff is once again going to be playing with the 17th SS Panzer Grenadier. Now I'm not entirely sure if the players get to ban in between games um, rather than just before the first game. However, I think that Neff getting his hands on the 17th SS twice in a row, especially after his performance in the last game, is definitely a bad omen. However, the 6th Airborne do do relatively well. If Airborne Paras are bought into the center, then we will see quite good contestation. I don't even know if that's a word. <laughs> against the Stars Troop. And they'll be contesting very well. Um, so Airborne Paras, probably one of the best squads that um, Russ could have picked up in order to kill off Stoss Troop. Because Stoss Troop have 18 HE on on five men. And the Airborne Paras, I'm not entirely sure of their HE value, but they're still very, very good in close quarters combat. They have high veterancy and high numbers of men. So you're going to be wanting to have maybe three units of Airborne Paras and a command infantry in the center, just to sort of hold the factory. And then on the bottom side, you're going to want like Airborne Bren Group, same goes for the top side, um, because that's where the longer range engagements will occur. Now on the side of Neff, he has got his units down very, very quickly actually. Going to be focusing quite a lot on IGs, and just as I mentioned when I was casting the games between Magic Man and Chicken Dew, the IG-18s are perfect counter for the 6th Airborne if the 6th Airborne doesn't have their mortar support at the start of the game. So alongside, you know, Bren Group at the top and at the bottom with Airborne Paras and Command in the mid, you're going to probably want to see uh, mortars in the middle, middle as well, because then those mortars can provide that mortar cover uh, to either side. You could probably put one here, honestly, and, and one here, although you probably don't want them too near the roads either in case any sort of vehicles come rushing through. But on the side of uh, the 17th SS, that doesn't normally happen. So Neff's just going to be looking for those sort of clutch infantry engagements, using his smoke again um, to reposition his Stoss troop. And then in the open, relies on the IG-18s to hit the 6th Airborne from a distance. And um, he's just got to hope that Rust hasn't brought in any mortars. And I don't see a single mortar at the start from Rust, which is a big problem. Also, I'm not entirely sure what infantry this is, but I hope it's airborne paras. We have two Piat teams going down to the bottom side and an AT gun. Going to be trying to hold the bottom side tree line there as well. That's going to be countered instantly by the IG-18s though. In the top side, again, nice combination of Stoss troop. We have some Panzergrens in there and the IGs. On the main road, six pounder has been dropped off. However, another IG we're just waiting to pick up that kill. Speed Troop dropping off into that tree line. One of the infantry Stoss Troop is going to go down to the first shot of the 6-pounder. But the IG will clear, clean that up quite nicely. IG-18 also going to be getting shots onto this AT gun on the bottom side. This is actually the uh, captured pack. And that pack, if it goes down to the IG early on, is going to be 100 points in the sink. 90 points, near enough. And there we go, dead already. That's also going to open up a massive salient on the bottom side. This IG-18 going to town on Airborne Bren Group in this factory. That is a big mistake from Rust. Why would you invest in Airborne Bren Group? They only have 8 HE at close range compared to the Stoss Troops 18 and those Bren Group even get being surrendered because there's no command. This is a huge mistake here. Stoss Troop going to be dropping their smoke as the Pathfinders and the Piat approach. Now that Piat might 
actually just die. Yep, died almost instantly there. And now we see the Stoss Troop taking on the Pathfinders. Pathfinders actually have a decent HE though. So might be able to win that engagement unless they get pinned down. There's no command nearby. Or oh, just about win out. The two airborne paras now coming into the bottom side. I think that's definitely the wrong choice. Uh, especially considering there's two IG-18s here. These airborne paras don't have their own smoke. And are the 100 range, 100 meter range infantry. So they're going to have to get really close to these IG-18s to take them out. Even though there's an attack order there for him to do so. In the center, it's no surprise that Stoss Troop are killing off the airborne Bren group easily. And Neff using the smoke again to sort of reposition his troops. If he can get into this building before the airborne Bren group do, then those airborne Bren group are going to be slaughtered in the open. Let's just watch them go down. They just don't know what to do. Getting killed off very quickly. IG-18 going to be able to kill off some reinforcements there as well from the Airborne Bren group. On the top side, this is the only place that Rust is able to contest at this point. Airborne Sniper getting way too close to the Sauce Troop and Panzer Grenadiers. And there is some reinforcing infantry coming up the road. I hope that's some Airborne Paras. It is. Uh, because those are the only thing that he's going to be able to use at this point to remove the Stoss Troop and the Speed Troop from that position. But that needs to be accompanied by a mortar. There is not a single mortar on the map. And if there was, then these IG-18s would be m so much less of a problem. These airborne paras just running directly into that fire. And that's just going to kill them off so damn quick. These IG-18s have a lovely rate of fire. I don't love IG-18s for no reason. 9 HE. Solid rate of fire. Going to be killing off one of those airborne paras, and this one's just going to have to fall back. Factory completely under the control of Neff. Something that I did not expect to see. Sixth airborne should be able to hold a factory with the airborne paras, but not today. As airborne Bren group were used instead of airborne paras, and that is such a big problem. And these airborne paras now being bogged down at max range. 4 HE. Like... The speed troop can match up to airborne paras, it's just not using them effectively. We also see an airborne jeep Vickers coming up. Very questionable decision. Also the Tetrarch Little John. There is literally no armor to kill. So a Tetrarch Little John, another interesting choice. Now this jeep Vickers here is probably going to go down to the machine guns of the Panzer Grenadier. If it's not careful. Needs to stay out of the 400 meter range, but never mind. Jeep goes down. We need a mortar here. That's the only thing that's going to stop Neff from continuing to push forwards. And on this top side, the use of smoke is perfect in order to make all of this infantry surrender. Panzer Grenadiers used with their machine guns to pin down at long range, then the smoke thrown down, and the Stoss Troop charge forwards. Fantastic job by Neff in this one. IG-18 is going to be able to get the shots towards the Tetrarch Little John. And honestly, an IG-18 is going to be more than enough to pin that down. Flakvilling also coming up to join the party. We are going to be seeing the IG-18 uh, slam uh, one of the trucks here before the infantry drops out. I believe the infantry survived that time round though. But uh, another IG, I believe, on the way. This one, the IG-33. It's a similar strategy to before, bring in the IG-18s early, then bring in the IG-33 later on. These Piats, waste of points really, early on. Could have definitely invested in enough airborne Paris to go into this factory. And now whenever he gets close to this factory, his airborne Paris, because they're not in cover, are just going to be, be killed off. There's no more to support, and uh, the IG-18 can support. So now only two Tetrarch Little Johns left on the map. Airborne Bren Group going to try and hold the bot side. But resistance will be futile as the IG-18s will get on target. I'm again surprised to not see the Rust use his Piat here however to even kill off this IG-18. It moved very very close. There we have it. Rust surrenders. And after 6 minutes and 26 seconds that is a victory for Neff, who is going to move on to the next round of the tournament. We are going to have to say goodbye to Rust in this one, as he does get knocked out quite hard.
harshly by Neff. 605 kills, 240 losses for Neff. Fantastic job. Russ just really not using the division to its strengths in order to hold that factory against Austria, which should have definitely been something that um, Russ could have done. Neff didn't like invest in any mortars or anything, so that could have been punished very hard as well, especially considering the airborne mortars with the two-star veterancy are very strong at the start. Um, so yeah, just getting those mortars in to, pun to punish the use of IG-18s would have been fantastic, but didn't happen. Same with the uh, the use of the airborne paras, and I'm going to keep going on about it because just never use Bren Group in a in a like close up scenario when you have airborne paras to do that job. It just seemed silly to me. Uh, furthermore, you're going to need those mortars to provide the smoke for your airborne paras because unlike Stoss Troop, they don't have grenades that can use that can uh, be used for smoke. So I think Rust here just sort of outclassed, didn't really know um, to how to play around the division properly and that kind of um, led him to lose this game. So 2-0 to Neff and he's going to win the best of three. Move on to round two to face off against Chicken Jew in the bracket. So that'll be an interesting fight for sure. Both Neff and Chicken Jew showing that they have serious potential to win this tournament. And their opponents now long gone. So we've been moving on to more round one games as we continue. And um, we'll find out who else is going to join Neff and Chicken Jew in round two of the great Paradox Tourney. But for now that's all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.